Hello everyone, my name is Joe Berry and I work for Visuality Systems. In this series of videos, I'm going to introduce you to what I believe is probably the second most popular protocol on the internet, right behind HTTP, which is of course the protocol used to power everyone's web pages. So what is this second most popular protocol? It's called SMB. So let's start right off with the simplest example of using SMB, and that is copying files from one computer to another. We first open an Explorer window on our computer. We want to copy the file that we see here to another computer on our local network. So let's open an Explorer window on that computer. We will use the Quick Access dialog to open that window. Now, in order to transfer the file to the folder on the remote computer, I only have to click, drag, and drop the file onto that folder. Easy, right? So what actually happened when I did that? Under the covers, Windows has logged into that remote computer passing in my credentials. It then opened and copied that file. Both the authentication as well as the file transfer were accomplished using SMB. What about copying a remote file to my local computer? This is done the same way using the same protocol. Watch as I drag and drop the file onto my local folder. And of course, we can do slightly more sophisticated things like editing a file directly on the remote computer. Watch as I double click on this doc file, which has a size of 133 kilobytes. I am going to edit that file but note that this file is being edited directly on the remote computer. It is not copied to my local computer at all. I save the file, and we will see that the size of the file has changed. Now, can I do this with any remote folder? Of course not. That would be unsafe. The only reason I can even see the folder on this remote computer is because the folder itself has been set up as a shared folder, and the users who needed access to the folder were added to the list of allowed users. What you have seen here is a Windows to Windows demonstration where I, acting as a client, want to access a folder on a remote machine which acts as an SMB server. Microsoft's Windows operating system supplies the software on both the client as well as the server side to make this all work. Windows computers are not the only hardware devices that can be powered by SMB. Virtually any device can use SMB technology, either as a server or as a client, once SMB has been installed on that device. A common example is adding an external hard drive to a router that will then act as a file server. So to conclude, what I have discussed up to this point in time is just the beginning of what SMB can do. Further down the road, we will look at more advanced features of the SMB protocol and even learn to write code to access remote files programmatically. In my next video, I will review the various versions of SMB as almost all versions are still in use today. Thank you for listening.